One feature of this gingerbread house that was exceptionally difficult to program were the undercuts beneath the icicles. This model has been already kind of modified. You can see a lot of these icicles have been smoothed from the original. They're not quite as extreme as they used to be. In fact, we've also kind of squared off the backsides of these icicles. Now, initially what our plan was, was to take a simple contour toolpath and run a slotting saw along the back of this icicle. And if we look down this view here, the slotting saw does a pretty good job. It's safe from this window. It gets most of the undercut, but there's gonna be some area in here we still can't really reach. What we needed to do was find a different tool and find a way to approach this with a multi-axis toolpath. So we went ahead and modeled some geometry under here that if I turn off the model of the house, you can see this sort of approximates what the undercut beneath the icicles is gonna look like. So hiding this, we can see really something very simple to program. So let's just show you how we went about this. Basically start with a unified toolpath and our 40 millimeter slotting saw. Our drive surface was this undercut first. And initially we started with a morph toolpath. So we need to make two groups to build a morph toolpath. Morph from here to here. If I simply turn everything off here just so that we can see a really quick preview of this toolpath, we'll see we have pretty straightforward motion morphing from one end to the next. So of course, if we just let this generate, what we have here is really not gonna be something that we wanna run because we're facing normal to the underside of these icicles. So let's start by adding some side tilt to get this cutter tilted away from the icicles. So let's say start with a 90 degree side tilt. Looks like we wanna go negative 90 degrees. So there we go, you can see our retract sending out this way. At the same time, we extended the cut motion so that the slotting saw would be off the part before it changed directions and retracted. We can turn on extend trim, maybe extend one full diameter of the cutter past the end of the part. So let's snap to this view and see what this toolpath looks like now. So obviously we're interfering with the body already, so we're gonna have to address this end of the, uh, the toolpath. And of course, we are still interfering with this window here. You can kind of see that as we're approaching this side of the, the wall, we have some issues with the window. And then we also have problems with the icicles. What we're gonna need to do is vary our tilt from start to end of this path. So let's say we start with a little bit more of a tilt just to start with and go from there. So let's go about 97 degrees and see if this solves one end or the other of our cut. So basically, if we look at this cut now, we interfere more with the icicles than we did before. But at the beginning of the path, we actually, once we are out of this collision with the house, we are safe with respect to the tip of this window. So if we just add some sort of a margin to the start, we'll be able to start this toolpath without actually interfering with this window. And then what we can do is apply a gradual side tilt that creates enough tilt motion to tilt us away from the end of the icicles. So in this case, let's try a gradual side tilt change of plus 17 degrees. And now what's gonna happen is we start, you know, we're, we're inside the part here, but we're gradually tilting away to the point where we're just about safe. And again, we're interfering with the icicles, so we're gonna have to add a little bit of a margin here just to keep us from interfering. But this motion in general is a good start. So the next step is we have to try to avoid interfering with either end of this pocket. And there are a few ways to do that, but in this case, we can apply a margin to the beginning and end of this toolpath, meaning we can tell the toolpath to start away from the end of the surface. So in this case, something like a 0.9 margin, let's say 0.9 on both sides. This can be a metric 
just 0.9 millimeters of, of space away from the beginning of these surfaces. So you can see 0.9 here has got us just about perfect on this edge. And this is really about as much as we're going to be able to reach with any tooling that exists for a CNC mill into this pocket. And as we approach the end of this, we have a tool path that is also safe down here, finishes the backside of the icicles. Again, they are square, but this is something you're not going to notice from looking at the part. Basically at this point, all we have to do is plug in some parameters to make this cut a little bit more real. So as we back plot through this, we can see that this is now a safe toolpath to run with respect to the window, the icicle, and the wall. So this is just one way of using Mastercam's multi-axis capabilities with a side tilt and a gradual side tilt change and really simple tools to make a really complicated toolpath.